Hi, hello, welcome to Devon Monk's Works and Worlds. We are on Monday Monk 15, I think. Again, I'm feeling pretty strong about that. I, when I first started these, I thought, I don't know, maybe I'll do a few and see if it's a way that I like to communicate information that's going on in my writing life uh, for people who are interested in reading my books. And I thought maybe it'd be a good way to let people know where I'm at in my knitting life for people who like to knit or who want to get knit toys, <laughs> which you can get my newsletter, sign up for my newsletter, I give them away for free. <laughs> um, and then I thought, well, Maybe it's just another way that I can reach out and say hello to people who might want to spend 15 minutes with, I don't know, an author who just wants to spend a little time talking about authory stuff. So uh, welcome. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you. What's going on this last week? Well, um, as you know, if you watched the last Monday Monk, I finished <laughs> Brood of All Evil, which is Ordinary Nine in the, um, I mean, it's number nine in the Ordinary Magic series, book number nine. And I feel pretty good about it now that a week has gone past. Uh, it is in the hands of my copy editor. I have about half of the book back at this point. She's lobbying chapters back to me as she gets the copy edits done on them. So I have about half of the book back at this point and I've gone through it and I've had beta reads on it. And so I've gotten some input on it. And some of the things that I was really hoping the book could do, it seems to have done, which is very exciting. <laughs> there are, of course, a couple spots I'm going to fix. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I had, I had in a week written something like, I can't remember, 24,000 words or something. It was, it was a chunk. And most of them were, most of those words were done in like two days or two and a half days. So I was really burning the words. And then I turned around like the very next day and started editing the words, which is as quickly as I could going through the entire book and not just cutting out words that, you know, in sentences that didn't work or were unclear, but also like making those dialogues snappy and uh, adding in paragraphs where par new paragraphs needed to be, or, you know, kind of smoothing out the emotional flow of the characters. And, um, by the end of that pass, I cut 13,000 words. So I also added words, but I also cut words. And so net, net, I yanked out, I machete hatcheted everything. My copy editor is like, seems like you're missing something here. I'm like, of course I'm missing something there. I went through and I did like, if it didn't serve the story, I hacked it out. That being said, I've calmed down a little and I'm going to go back through it one last time with the copy edits and put in anything that I may have ripped out by the roots um, so that it so that it can flourish and be a, a full story. So that's what I'll be doing this week. Um, last week, what I was doing is messing around with a book I shouldn't be messing around with. <laughs> I was doing world building and the beginning of outlining, again, not outlining, but the beginning of you know, brainstorming and getting my characters and getting the emotional tone that I wanted for the book uh, kind of in my head and working through that. And I'm excited about that because this is a book that I've been thinking about writing for at least 10 years. And I wasn't sure if I was up to it and I feel like I might be up to it now. So I'm going to be working on that on the side and I will keep you up to date on that book. It doesn't have a title, doesn't, I don't have anything else to share about it. We'll call it Book X. <laughs> it's out there, Book X, and uh, I'm working on it. So that's pretty exciting. That's pretty exciting. Um, I did decide on what next project I'm going to work on now that once I get Ordinary Magic 9, which is called Brute of All Evil, once I get that out and uh, formatted and published and you all get to read it if you want, my next project will be the next um, Souls of the Road book, which is my Route 66 Urban Fantasies. Uh, the next one is called Wayward Sky, and um, I will be working on that next, and that will be coming out, I want to say, in the uh, in the autumn, in the fall. Um, oh, and uh, Brute of All, I'm kind of going backwards here, but Brute of All Evil, which is Ordinary Magic 9, it will be coming out June 20th, I think. Mark your calendars, there's not a, not a pre-order link yet. I'll let you know when there is. I'll probably even put the pre-order link down below. I don't know if I can do that. If I can do that, I'll do that. And um, yeah, so Brood of All Evil. Well, so in order, my short novel that ties into the Souls of the Road or the, um, you know, the Wayward 
Route 66 books is called Oak and Ink, and that's going to be in Dirty Deeds 2. I know I've talked a lot about this, June 7th. And then Brood of All Evil, which is the next Ordinary book, Ordinary 9, will be June 20th, I'm pretty sure. And then um, Wayward Skies will be coming out, I think, maybe in September, but I'm not sure. I will keep you up to date on that. So that's writing, and it is going well. Thank you. Um, how's knitting going? Pretty darn good. I actually picked the toy that I'm going to give away for the next newsletter and I started knitting it and it's it's kind of cute so far and I'm excited to get it done and I'll show it to you. Hopefully I'll show it to you next video. So stay tuned. I'll be revealing probably a toy in the next video. So knitting is going well. This pattern is um, much simpler than the last couple patterns I tackled. So yeah, I'm having fun with it. It's it, If it goes well and quickly, which it seems to be, I will uh, probably, <laughs> I'll probably do more of these because these is pretty cute. Okay, so that kind of um, ends it. That's all I was going to say, how writing's going, how uh, how knitting's going, and, and then I usually pull something out of the box, which I will do. Uh, but before I pull a random comp question out of, or subject out of the box, I did want to say please ask me questions down below. Last week I went on a babbling kind of <laughs> sort of a monologue about outlining that didn't really quite nail down how I actually outline things. But I was curious if you're interested in those kinds of craft um, videos from me, just sort of how I approach writing to see if any of that would, you know, spark some excitement or some aha in your writing process. It's something I'd be happy to do. Let me know in the comments if you think I should talk more about writing, uh, as in the craft of writing or the art, however you want to look at it, and I'll, I'll see what I can do. I don't know if I would do a pre-prepared video or if I just <laughs> fly right in and see what happens. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd probably do the other, the second thing. <laughs> okay, here's our box. Here's our um, subjects. Oh, and before I pull out a subject here, which is a question, remember you can ask me questions and I won't have to use a box. I'm going to tell you this. My sister suggested that I film some of the flowers in my yard because people who don't live in Oregon might like to see the flowers in Oregon or people who live in different parts of Oregon might like to see the flowers in the Willamette Valley where I live. And so I did. I, I filmed some um, little tiny snippet videos of some flowers in my yard. It was a spring day. It was this last week. It was raining, sunning, raining, sunning, but the sun was only for like, you know, half of a minute or a minute. And then the rain would rain for like two hours straight. And then we'd get like two minutes of sun. And so I, <laughs> I was standing by the window all day, staring at the clouds going like, are you going to clear? Is this, is it going to clear the sun so I can actually get outside and get a good photo of flowers and kind of sunlight instead of just the gray, gray, gray that we've been having lately here in Oregon. And it did, you know, of course, the sun usually breaks through. I mean, not always. We've had some real gray days, but, you know, we had boofy clouds. You can see them in the video um, that were allowing the sun to peek through every now and then. And so I ran outside in all of the sunny spots, ran out in my socks and the ground was wet. So had wet socks most of the day. Anyway, ran outside a lot and took some photos of some flowers. I spliced it together in a little one minute little music with flowers at the end of this video. So stay to the end of the video if you want to see some flowers from my yard. Inexpertly filmed by moi <laughs> and set to music inexpertly by moi. So if you want to see that delightful little show, stick around to the end of the video. It's like a minute. <laughs> But you'll see some flowers. Uh, I might list what the flowers are if people are curious. I think right off the top of my head, they're hydrangea, um, dogwood tree, what else do I have? Iris, lilac, golden chain. Is that all? Seemed like so much more. Probably something else I'm forgetting. All right, here we go. We're going to pull our question, and that will tie off our video. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny. I mean, I guess I could talk about this, but I feel like I do nothing but talk about this. So here we go. Ah, Souls of the Road. Souls of the Road. That is, uh, I don't know 
how many series I've written, but that is one of my newer, it's my newest series. And it is Route 66. So it's the old American highway, the old nostalgic Americana highway um, with urban fantasy. And uh, they're a little bit shorter books. There will be six in the series, one for all of the states that we're going through on the route. I, I skipped Kansas because there's not a lot of Kansas on the route. And I skipped California because that's the end of the route and the books don't get there. But uh, yeah, we start off in Illinois and this, in, the, in the first book and the second book is in Missouri. And um, I took a trip down Route 66 with my husband. We actually, a couple years back, we uh, flew to Chicago and drove it all the way back to California. But we, <laughs> we only had so much time to do it, like a time he could get off work and I could get away. I think 11 days, but one day on each side was flying home. So we ended up with like, what is that nine days on the road itself and it was we drove for like we only wanted to drive the old route so we didn't go on the highway if we could avoid the highway by going around the side of the highway and driving along it at 45 miles an hour and then under it for 45 miles an hour on the other side and then under it again instead of just going straight down the highway at like 70 miles an hour we did that because we were following the old route 66 which there have been several of them i think the first one was in 2000 or 19 24 or 26 1926 was the first route and then there was another one like in the 30s where they like kind of would take the route and go a little better way so there are some parts of the route that just dead in and go nowhere or aren't really there anymore but as much as we physically could we stuck our tires to that old route and uh it was it was exhausting and it was amazing seeing how big America is uh, and we didn't go like really we went from shore to shore kind of shore to shore but not quite because we're starting in Chicago but just going through the massive changes of scenery from states to states was it was it was awe inspiring it was really wonderful it was that road trip that you see that kind of Americana get out on the road in the car and just go forever and there's nobody around you it's just you and the world it was that experience for us. It was amazing. And so when before we went on that trip, I was thinking about setting books along Route 66 and I had some ideas. One of them involved, uh, I had been joking with people about our dog at the time that she must have belonged to, we had adopted her at nine years old. Uh, we don't know who her other owners were, but we thought that maybe her other owner was a, a graveyard worker or maybe drove truck because she was always up at night and didn't mind loud noises and, and was a great traveler. And so I was joking at the time that she was uh, a pet of a vampire trucker. <laughs> and on my blog, this was years ago, people were like, yeah, write the story about the vampire trucker. And so the vampire trucker story sort of morphed into this story about uh, Lula Gage, who is almost a vampire, who has been trapped on Route 66. She's cursed to it. Um, tied to it by her mostly <laughs> her in spirit husband he's they were attacked by monsters and part of her soul entered him and part of his soul entered her and each of those bits of their souls were holding each other partly alive in in this world she's physically alive and he's spiritually he's a spirit alive as a spirit and they're traveling the route to try to find out who the monsters that did this to them so that they can you know get them and um trying to find a way to break their curse and it's i think it's it's a good it's a love story i mean it's it's urban fantasy but i lean into that kind of folk nor i know i've talked about this kind of a richer language take my time with it and um really explore their story traveling the road just like my husband and i traveled the road the um world that it's set in is actually the same world as Ordinary Magic. Ordinary Magic is set in a little town called Ordinary on the Oregon coast where the gods put down their powers and vacation and there's monsters who live there and it's it's uh, told from the story of the woman Delaney Reed and it's her job to keep the law in the place and to keep the gods on track and safe and all the monsters and supernaturals there safe and all the humans there safe and and uh, it's light and funny and fun. Um, the 
outside world is where the Souls of the Road series takes place. That's so the same gods that we see maybe vacationing in ordinary, if they're in the Souls of the Road book, they are not on vacation. They are doing their god jobs, which usually means they are a lot more serious and dangerous. So that it's kind of a nice um sister series with the Ordinary Magic series and I've really enjoyed writing the two books and like I said just a little bit ago I'm going to dive into writing the third book which is uh, Wayward Sky and if you haven't tried them I would encourage you to give them a go uh, there's only two in the series so far like I said the third one will be coming out soon Wayward Souls is the first book and you don't have to read Ordinary to read Wayward because, I mean, they're sister series, but they aren't, they aren't lockstep. Uh, that said, if you like the Ordinary Magic series, you might like Wayward because there's a little, there's a little hints here and there where you can see where the two worlds uh, crisscross. So, okay, that's it. I'm going to leave you now with some flowers in my spring garden, just out in my yard. I hope you enjoy them. And um, until next week or whenever you find this, I will see you soon. Bye now.